What's up guys, today I'd like to share with you how to evaluate positions and find the right plan, especially in the middle game. That's one of the questions that puzzles many chess players, in fact most of them, and I've been asked a lot so I'd like to cover. Let me share with you how I do this as a grandmaster in a real life game so that you can emulate this and use that in your own practice. Now, I deliberately took quite a tricky position, imbalanced and complicated, so that if you get it right here, everything else will be just easier for you. This game is actually between Yanni Pomnishi and Anish Giri. It is wide to move, but it doesn't really matter, because we're gonna talk more in general about evaluation and planning. You may think about this position yourself for a second. Who's better here and why? And what should I do about this? So what is your plan? And after that, we're gonna go over this together and we'll see how to do it in a simple fashion. Alright, so how do you evaluate a position? Instead of going over a long list of items, which often different authors suggest you to do, I use a much simpler method, which consists of only two ideas. All right? So the first thing is that you evaluate the material, material balance. Like, who has more material? And it's a pretty simple thing, because in most cases, the material balance is equal. And if, let's say, you grabbed an opponent's piece or a pawn, it usually stays like that for a certain amount of moves in a row, therefore you don't have to evaluate it at every turn, you just know that you're, let's say, up a, piece, up a piece or the position is equal. Now, talking about the current position, we can see that um, there is some material imbalance, and you can figure it out by excluding equal pieces so that you don't have to think about them. For example, two bishops are equal, we don't have to think about them. Two rooks are equal, we don't have to think about them. On the queen side in the center, we've got five pawns versus five pawns, so we can again disregard them. And the imbalance that we've got here is that white has a rook, a knight, and these two pawns versus a queen. So that's actually the thing that we got to evaluate. And if we use the common uh, uh, evaluation criteria, then rook is five pawns, knight is worth three pawns, so five plus three is eight, plus two pawns, it's ten, and queen is worth nine pawns, and we can say that white is a pawn up, which gives white a material balance, that's cool for white. And the second and basically final factor that you need to evaluate is activity of your pieces. Now, what is activity? It's how many squares do you control on the board? Because that shows you whether you dominate the board or whether your opponent does so, right? Now, quite often you can do that intuitively, just by seeing who has more space, who has more freedom of maneuver, who is more advanced, right? Who is capable of creating threats. But for the sake of, you know, explicitly, let's try to get it like really step by step. So if we talk about black species, now they've got a bishop, which is pretty active, it controls a bunch of squares, that's nice for black. But the other black species are completely passive. This rook on a8 is just doing nothing in the corner, completely bad. The queen on g8 is also doing nothing, completely bad. And it's pretty hard to move it around, given the fact that white is controlling a bunch of squares there. The queen can barely move and it doesn't do anything. So the queen is also completely passive. Therefore, speaking about black, currently it's rather bad. Okay, now let's talk about white. White spaces, on the other hand, are all pretty active. We've got this rook on open file, which is great, another rook on a semi-open file, putting pressure to this pawn on a7, our bishop is controlling a bunch of squares, it is well defended, standing on a nice square, our knight is also centralized and ready to go forward and join the party whenever we need it to. So all our pieces are very active. So we've got all white spaces are active versus most of black spaces are passive, which means that white's got a big advantage. Now, if we summarize these two factors, white has material advantage and his pieces are much more active. So in both of the main criteria, white is way ahead, which means that white's position should be winning. Voila, that's how you do it. And as you automate this process and train a little bit, you'll be able to do it quickly and really within seconds. If you wish to go even more in depth to understand the position completely, you may also consider two other factors, but in most cases, in reality, you don't need to do that because you can just follow the process that we discussed so far. Anyway, just for the sake of complete clarity, let's talk about those remaining factors. So far, we talked about material balance and activity of your pieces. Therefore, the things that we forgot kind of to talk about are king safety and pawns. Now, why am I saying that you should not think about that? Because they're less critical. And so you can, can ignore them, save time, and still evaluate position correctly. But if you want to be super methodical, you can also evaluate king safety. In this case, white skin is safe, black skin is also fairly safe, although in the center of the board, so slightly more exposed. So white also has a little bit of an edge here. And the final thing is the pawn structure. In the pawn structure, we evaluate weaknesses. And in this case, we've got this pawn on g6, which is isolated. And white can possibly go after it and try to attack it. So that's one drawback of black position. And basically, that is it. Potentially, you can also consider uh, pass pawns, especially in an endgame. So white theoretically could create a pass pawn on the h-file, because this pawn does not have a counterpart of black 
on the king side. Similarly, on the queen side, black can possibly create a pass pawn on the A file because there is no counterpart on the A file from the white side. But this is not that critical right now. It's more for an end game. So uh, to summarize all factors together, if we consider all four, white actually has an edge in all of them. White is an extra pawn. White is more active. His king is safer, and finally his pawn structure is better because black has least weakness, which once again proves the point that white's position should be winning. Now, if we transition from there to planning, so how do you go about planning? Well, you attack opponents' weaknesses, and you capitalize on your strengths. So planning often comes as a logical conclusion of your evaluation. For instance, if we want to target this pawn, we probably wish to move the rook forward and at least tie the queen down to the defense of this pawn. If we want to capitalize on our greater activity of the pieces, we can try to keep moving them forward. For instance, we can stack rooks along this f file so that we'll be completely dominant there. So that's how you start playing. After that, maybe in the end game, we wish to create this pass pawn on the h file. So you use all the factors that we talked about previously and you just capitalize on them. Now, we've got some good news. Since it's Black Friday and you're part of the Igor Nation, you can seize this opportunity to get any of my premium chess courses at 80% off. Just click the link below the video in the description, pick something that you like, and I'll do my best to serve you and to help you achieve your chess goals faster than ever. On top of that, with holding a lottery where five lucky winners will win my super pack, the collection of all my best chess courses worth over $1,600, five lucky winners will win it for free. Again, you can check the details in the description below. Hope you're having a great rest of the day. I'll talk to you soon.